So the ninth installment of the Friday 13 movies is called Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. And this is your final chance to see it. Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. In 1993. Again, quote, The Final Friday. So, this movie went under the New Line Cinema studio thing because our over the eighth one failed miserably at box offices and they needed to sell it so they don't go bankrupt. So, it is New Line Cinema's, you know, property now and it's their turn to tell sort of their story and their take. Part nine, or Jason Goes to Hell, is definitely a different take and very unique, I will say. So, there was allegedly a comic that bridged the gap with part eight and this one followed Jason after he was dipped in toxic waste in New York City sewer and his killing spree all going all the way back to Camp Crystal Lake. It explains why the FBI has been on his ass at the beginning of the movie. So yeah, at the beginning of the movie, they throw you first for a loop. There's just Agent Marcus who's pretending to be a damsel in distress. Turns out she's also an agent so that she can go and lure, you know, she's the bait and so she can lure Jason at the beginning. Who, by the way, in the beginning gets fucked up. He gets shot and blown the fuck up. beginning of this movie and it's awesome and yeah harry says the reason why it's not titled fire 13 is because new line cinema didn't have the rights to the name fire 13 sean s cunningham i think so have the rights i think or paramount i think so after jason gets shot to pieces his heart is shown still beating implying that he's still alive and apparently this heart was used and from dusk till dawn in 1996 as monkey man's heart that's an interesting little you know crossover there i did not know that from dusk till dawn is a cool ass and good movie watch it one early concept for this movie was that jason goes to la in which two rival gangs would be fighting jason would show up and start murdering them this would force rival gangs to band together to defeat jason i don't know if people would want that over rival gangs beating up jason i mean i'm just gonna assume they would all just die that was yeah i don't know how that would have gone honestly so the heart was made of gelatin filled with a fruit cocktail mixed with black dye because the actor richard grant the coroner who decides to eat his art was still disgusted and reportedly nearly thrown up during the take so they take jason to the coroner's office or whatever you know peel off his can do work on it and his heart starts beating and then richard grant's character is like i'm hungry and he decides to eat the shit out of it he eats it chomps on it and then these weird red lights or souls starts <laughs> coming into it starts going inside of him and oh god i don't know how to cut that out but starts going inside of him and it's jason jason somehow has this ability to transfer his soul into other as meat suits and that is an interesting take i won't lie i didn't mind this movie and see why hardcore friday fans would hate this movie it deviates way too much from the original but i didn't mind it i actually liked it a little bit so if they still had the friday 13th title the original title of the movie was going to be friday the 13th part 9 the dark heart of jason Voorhees. okay I mean, hearts in it. It's hearts in the movie. Makes sense. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's just a kind of generic title, honestly, if you ask me. So apparently, Michael B. Silver and Michelle Clooney. I'm gonna say Clooney. Play Luke and Deborah in the film had been a real life couple. I broke up shortly after before casting. And this made some initial awkwardness when they discovered they would be working together in such an intimate scene. So I'm assuming that's like the main characters of the guy with the glasses and the yeah, girl who, who happens to be a Voorhees. I'll get to that later. I, I can see why that would be awkward. They broke up. They're like, okay, we'll go our separate ways. They're at both actors and turns out they're cast in the same role or not same role the same movie and they have to be together not a couple i don't think but they have to be together really i mean yeah it says here would have been really weird and awkward around set as much as 43 minutes of the final film came via reshoots and repurposed footage during this process storyline completely dropped aaron greg's character and the sheriff being engaged in planning their honeymoon while others were added via creative editing carrie keegan and steven's corpse characters have been a couple there also have been some compressed vital scenes such as duke explaining the rules even the after all that, Cunningham still found the finished film beyond embarrassing, saying, Adam came to me and said, the last thing the fans wanted to see Jason going through Camp Crystal Lake, chopping up teenagers again. And of course, it was the only thing they wanted to see, and Adam delivered this movie that was not so good. So, originally, roles eventually played out. I don't know. The film did feel a little clunky, but I didn't notice it. It wasn't a jarring negative for me, to be honest. It was just kind of like, that's weird, but I'm gonna move on. None of these characters are memorable. Some of them are fine, but they're not memorable at all. This is the only film in the series only to be released in the night. 1990s that means the first eight was all in the 80s jesus I've, yeah i just think i don't know damn i've never realized how much they just milked it eight movies in the same decade in the 80s 80 81 82 84 85 86 
86, 88, 89. Like, damn. Shit, I just never noticed that. Damn. Eight movies in the same decade. That's fucking insane. Thinking about it now. And it also makes sense that the 90s was, this is the only movie in the 90s because the 90s for slashers weren't really a big thing until Scream came around in 96. So, it made sense there as well. Tony Todd, your boy Candy, auditioned for the role of Duke, but lost out to Stephen Williams. Stephen Williams, by the way, is Rufus from Supernatural and he plays this Duke character kind of over the top and way too serious which is the best part like he's so he knows all his knowledge about Jason Voorhees on how to kill him in this movie and he has this presence to him where yeah you can't keep his eyes off him he he's honestly one of the best parts of the movie he's really fun to watch so this is the first Friday film to have another Voorhees other than Jason in the movie since the first one so sort of the big glaring issue out of this movie is the fact that they try to force an add-on like these additional mythos to the Jason and slash Voorhees lore like apparently Jason had like this half sister or sister somewhere who's known like she's a voice and she just kept it to herself and may or may have known that jason's alive they thought she he's going after his like bloodline kind of like michael myers and then in this movie he does kill his sister right but then that sister who's like in her 40s has a daughter and that daughter who is teenage 19 years old or something has like a baby too so he has to go over two of his siblings and to me i was sitting there watching the movie and being like this is like in you know, michael myers this is halloween four five and six but they didn't really work with growth of them well kind of did but i don't know uh, it was indifferent about it but they basically used that and like let's just do this for jason and it doesn't work when I mean, you're to have an established franchise like jason we all know that he has a mother father and just him forcing and adding on he has a sister that was just kinda, that was dumb and apparently there's a Voorhees house they're adding a Voorhees house now just like with myers and freddie there's a freddie myers house they have to add a jason there isn't a jason house there's camp crystal lake so yeah this kind of weird like yeah and then adding the fact that a sibling a or his sibling has to kill Jason with this fucking magical dagger or I don't know fucking from wizards or some shit I don't know it was weird that was only negative the glaring negative so there is a substance amount of male nudity in this film with female nudity the most notable one was the homoerotic shaving scene where or fans called that oops fans called that where so, so the way Jason transfers his soul or whatever he has like a warm like thing and he transferred by kissing into other people just going inside his genital like this was once he goes inside I think his sister's genital a weird scene but yeah he like kisses them and there's this one like, homoerotic scene where he has this dude nude and he like kisses him and he transfers his soul and then the cool thing about this movie is that when he leaves a person's meat suit that human like melts that <laughs> Awesome, awesome practical effect but yeah that's i do like the idea transferring his soul into other people by you know kissing them whatever and going to another meat suit leaving the other meat suit all melted this film made over 15.9 million an improvement over with 14.3 million however it is still the second lowest grossing for a 13 movie at that point so yeah people were having like jason fever or not jason fever but they were just getting tired of it right the new line had it and the 90s were a good time for slashers so made sense as to why it made so little money oh this is interesting this is the only friday the 13th film not to feature any scenes of jason being unmasked as he does not have a physical form of for the majority of the film so that's one thing that does suck where kane hodder is playing mirrors of himself so when a human pisses by jason walks by a mirror you see jason form that's how you know it's jason and just the weird walking from that human but i don't know it's like you can't have your king and eat it as well like it's a cool idea it's a different take not a lot of people are gonna be on board with it i am kind of on board with it but yeah they did kind of waste it just kane hodder just being like you know what just just be in whatever just be in mirrors what the hell not apparently the film originally had a flashback sequence and betsy palmer was proposed or yeah, proposed to reprise her role but reject i wonder why she hmm. i mean in the first one she did say that she doesn't like like horror i think her her rejecting it isn't a big surprise Terry keegan's negative experience working on the film and her antagonistic relationship with the director adam marcus eventually caused her to quit acting for good kind of saw like curse of michael myers no it's not that's not like that but it seems like i don't know it's kind of issue like sean s cunningham had an issue with this movie and one of their actors has an issue with the director like it's starting to sound like behind the scenes issues not as bad as you know curse wait i don't even know god i'm like who the hell sh did she play is that the main girl i'm so sorry for this lazy ass like sort of <laughs> I've talk about oh god i forgot who she is i'll put up a picture of her in the movie i after editing this i don't know who she is but right now i'm binge watching and talking about the movie i'll forget who the hell she was in this movie and i guess lastly the last little, little bit here at just 23 years old at the time adam marcus was the youngest director to direct friday the 13th film 
did not know that at 23 he got a chance to direct a jason Voorhees film and you know what he did okay he did as best as he could honestly i don't think again as i stated earlier i could see why people hate this movie but i don't hate this movie i like the weird direction and take that they did with the whole soul transferring and eating hearts and the kills in this movie are, are brutal they're actually gory and bloody i was like i'm enjoying this this is better than seven and half of eight honestly and him him like the humans melting because of how powerful jason is was awesome yeah there's some like the, the headbutt kills was cool what is this cool in here there's the oh shit i'm fucking forgetting some kills but there's actually some like decent and gory kills in this film and again i get why you and some people may hate it but i didn't mind it at all as someone who's not a big fan of this series it was a cool change of pace it was a little bit of fun the characters over i mean none of the characters are amazing that's still the norm except for duke played by your boy rufus and he was i don't know he was that weird and creepy fucking like character that i didn't mind being there honestly he was actually fun to watch however it is somewhat disappointing to, to see that duke dies by a bear hug right jason so after jason so he needs to get inside of a, a relative and he does with his dead sister i think and he comes back as you know jason which by the way his headpiece looks gross and cool it looks like a piece of shit like someone's shot and repurposed jason on a piece of human dookie placed it on his body that's what his head looks like and that shit looks gross and awesome and his mask is all broken all on the sides and everything the costume itself looks super baggy didn't like that but anyways he's reborn and he just bear hugs duke and a lame death but they have to go and this is in the Voorhees house again why they introduce this no idea they just did and in doing so he faces up with glasses boy and god i'm forgetting this girl's name a uh, second blood relative i'm gonna call her second blood relative and you know she finally gets his dagger they tussle for a bit she gets his dagger it transforms like some wizard poof there or something stabs jason red souls or something starts coming out and starts going in think he died he, well does he die sorry I'm, I'm thinking about the beginning and then these like demon souls or some shit from like hell comes out and takes him to hell as i'm getting the title of this movie jason goes to hell and it was done in this movie at the end jason does goes to hell and he goes underground and then th these two go off in the sunset that's how the human part and then in this awesome scene i remember watching the first time thinking this is awesome where jason's masking a pile of dirt and then the freddy gloves comes out and grabs the mask <laughs> goes inside which by the way that hand is played by kane hodder so he's the one actor who has played both jason and freddy cougar some as that and so yeah, that's obviously implying freddy versus jason is coming up however that would have happened 10 years later down the road yeah movie came out in 93 the movie and crossover that everyone would want would have come out in 2003 sadly because they couldn't figure out a script and stuff and issues like that and i will get to that when we get to that but in all honesty overall jason goes to hell the final friday this is indeed the final one it's okay honestly i did did not mind this movie i enjoyed the gore factor the different change of pace how weird and different it was what i don't like is the weird mythology adding stuff the whole sister the whole house thing that dagger thing that was weird the opening where he gets blown up that was awesome corny eating the heart gross disgusting and awesome and throughout the movie i'm in the middle with the whole body thing switching body we see glimpses of him of ken hodder playing but then he's in a human body i like that but i still don't i don't know in the middle about it they didn't mind it and then he's reborn and then character are thrown away as usual and most of these characters are in the series and then you know he comes out nephew kills him red souls and then freddy coming out and getting help like that whole freddy thing and grabbing the mask thing story-wise wouldn't come back but that would be changed later in freddy vs jason but that's not the next movie that's two movies down the road next is jason x that's gonna be an interesting one because he's in space